Well, awesome. I'm glad you're uh, here and you're going to do the podcast with us. Um, if you're tired, we can cut it a little short if you need to. Um, nah, man. I, I mean, I'm, here, I'm tired all the time. I'll push through. I'm just saying I'm uh, a little, I'm pretty stupid, so I'm slow anyways, but I'm a little slower than normal. Okay. <laughs> right. Awesome. Slow yeah, down. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Wendy. And welcome to the Toasted Toasted Marshmallow Adventures Adventures Podcast. All right, tonight we have a special guest uh, via Zoom. Uh, He's a comedian out of New York. Uh, His name is Tim McLaughlin, and he is going to be here in just a couple weeks for the Idaho Comedy Festival. Next week. Welcome. Um, Oh, yeah, it is only about a week away. Yeah, Yeah, what's up? Eight days. Dang, and counting. Is this your first time to Idaho? I've never been to Idaho. I'm trying to do stand up in every single state. And uh, when John was like, You want to do the Idaho Comedy Festival? I was like, Knocks off another state to do stand up. Yeah. So, Dang. I was like, Yeah. Yeah. We uh, just did an interview with John uh, last John Friday. And Jen. Yeah. That was really cool yeah, at well, the lounge. Yeah. Here that in, is a neat place. You're going to love it. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they sell some tickets because I, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I've been, I've done a shit ton of festivals, and it's just a crapshoot normally on uh, how the shows are going to be. So I'm hoping that they're real good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what there is to do in Boise. I heard it's cool. From everyone I've talked to, they've said it's like a pretty cool town. It is, definitely. It's kind of like this uh, oasis in the middle of Idaho that would kind of, I guess it's kind of being compared to like Portland or Austin now. Oh, yeah. Are you keeping it weird? They're, they're, tr- they're trying. trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I mean, the bluegrass helps, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That draws a yeah. lot of people. That's definitely what we're mostly known for. Yeah. <laughs> the grass. Mm-hmm. And potatoes. <clears throat> yeah. Potatoes. Occasional skinhead. You know, we're yeah. trying to change things. <laughs> it's like Indiana, but with corn. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like potatoes or corn. I mean, I like I can only eat my potatoes fried. I hate mashed potatoes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, I can do mash, but we're not, not a, big potato people. No, we're no. Pretty much always on a diet. So. So, yeah, we don't oh, get yeah. potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> out. <laughs> I need to be to. on a diet. My friend Jeff's been calling me the porkinator because I gained so much weight over the pandemic. <laughs> During the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, friend yeah. of the show, Jeff Sheen. He'll be at the Idaho Comedy Festival as well with his large teeth. Oh, nice. Oh, cool, awesome. cool. Yeah, I was watching your uh, podcast today and I saw Jeff on there. Yeah. And you made a comment of uh, the size of his teeth. <laughs> I do it about I do it almost every show. Oh, okay, <laughs> and I did it today when we were playing basketball. I told him not to bite the ball. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I was watching your podcast today a bit while I was, uh, just kind of researching things and stuff. Um, actually, I really liked your podcast, um, and the oh, segments you had, um, like the monologue segment, and I didn't get much further after that cause I was doing some other things, but, um, so does Jeff always write those monologues? He always sure? writes, well, we try to get other people to write monologue jokes cause we get, we do the show on Twitch and we get a hundred and something people watching the show on oh, Twitch. Cool. So I'm like, one of these times someone's going to write monologue jokes. And if you have listeners and they want to write monologue jokes for our show, you can send them to worldly mono jokes at gmail.com. Oh, cool. But most people don't write jokes at all. So Jeff has to write jokes so we can do the segment. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> We were having this dude, Alex Taubin, was writing jokes for, he he wrote jokes for like, I don't know, 20 weeks straight for the show. Yeah. He'd get like three or four on, but then, uh, I don't know, maybe he died. I have no idea. He hasn't uh, written any jokes in a while. I should check in on him, see if he's alive. <laughs> yeah, I think initially I clicked on an older episode that had uh, jokes written by someone else. I'm assuming the guy you're speaking of. Yeah, it's either him or sometimes if my buddy, uh, uh, friend of the show, Tom Takar, oh. he's uh, he's a, a good comedian who's been on TV. Sometimes he gets bored and writes uh, jokes for the show, too. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, nice. How long have you done the podcast? We're on episode 40 something. OK, so not that long. We do it. But I mean, we're going to have to start now that. uh stand up is back we're gonna have to start pre-recording it because um 
I don't think we're going to be able to do it. No, we can't get any guests, any comedian guests anymore. Yeah, they're uh, all out out of town. They're all doing everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I've had to turn down shows myself to do my own show. Oh, dang. So like tomorrow I got lucky because uh, they were like, can you get uptown by 830? And I was like, yeah, if I end the show at 755, I could probably get there by 830. But it's still like a. Uh, it's going to be a hustle for me to get to the show tomorrow that I have to do. But, you know, you got to you got to do it because I don't get booked very much. So how do you you Uber run Mm-mm. taxi? I take the train. We live um, we live in Brooklyn right off the L train. So it's really easy to get into the city and transfer wherever oh, nice. you need to go into the city. So nothing unless you're going really far north. Nothing's more than 35 minutes away on the train. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Man. It's all about the same as a car ride would be for 275 instead of, you know, whatever a car is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So you don't own a car, right? No, I know. There'd Which, be no reason. Sucks. Yeah. I, well, I can't. There's nowhere to park. Um, yeah. I would like to own a car. I was renting a car a lot during the pandemic to go back to Indiana and see my mom because she would. My dad said I couldn't come because I, I didn't. I didn't. I never really gave a shit about um, getting sick. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I was like, I just do because I rode the train the entire. Oh, pandemic. did you really? Yeah. Oh wow. I was just like, but I just stay masked up and I just don't touch anything and I, you know, and I'm just like, fuck it. I, and here's the thing: I'm like, if I get sick, I get sick. I don't think I'm gonna die. But then my girlfriend was like, well, you keep getting fatter and you have <laughs> asthma, so <laughs> you actually might. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you might die because she's like, but you are. She's like, but you know, but I told her I, I can't. I was like, I can't die because I have to finish reading One Piece, the manga that I read, and I've been reading it for 20 years. And if if I die before I finish reading it, I'll be pissed. <laughs> I'll probably come back and haunt the place oh, or something. Geez. I know I'll I'll haunt Ichiro Oda in Tokyo. <laughs> um, speaking of your girlfriend, I she's gonna be here. Yeah, she's gonna be here too as well, right? She is. Uh, yeah, she is in uh, sunny Los Angeles right now. Oh dang! Writing oh, for the MTV shows? Movie Awards. Huh? She's doing what? Yeah. She's writing for the MTV Movie Awards. Oh my God, that's oh, wow. awesome! That's cool. So she's coming straight from writing for MTV Movie Awards to Idaho. From whoa, that's going to be yeah. a shock. Wow. Yeah. So I uh, know. I mean, I think she'll be excited uh, that the um, uh, what am I trying to say? That she's not going to be like hustling and bustling around. Yeah. I think she'll be happy that everything will be in like one central spot, and that exactly. we can just get drunk there. Yeah. No, it's really cool how they're going to have it set up. Yeah, we were just uh, at the venue on Friday, and it's a really cool place. It's like a visual awesome. arts building now. You said it's an old federal building, and oh, that's having, neat. Yeah, and they're going to have a podcast row there, so pod local podcasts can come in, rent space, and I guess just uh, you know have ask comedians yeah. to come do their podcast right there. Yeah, Yeah, that's cool. And I let me tell you this. I know most of the comedians at the festival and they all like to just talk as much as they can. So, yeah, (laughs) I don't think anyone's going to be hurting for guests. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I noticed about John as well. He can he's not a one word answer kind of guy. No, (laughs) no, John likes to chat. (laughs) John's a little chatty Kathy. Yeah, that was fun. So what's your uh, home club there in New York? Well, I guess it would be stand up New York right now. I'm not, uh, I haven't been here that long. Oh, how long? I, I've, I've only been in New York for two years and one of them we've been under lockdown. So, oh, dang. I, so, I mean, I haven't wow. been here that I, I mean, I guess I've been here two and a, maybe almost three years, but it's hard to get in anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess stand up New York would be my home club. I I'm really just trying now to get back out and get sets, you know? But so the ones that we home, hear about, like what? Gotham or Carolines, or uh, can you just can you go do something there? Or it's is it? Yeah. No, I don't know. I here the thing about do they Carolines have to pass is, you for you to do something there. Yeah, normally. Oh wow! But Carolines, they do their um, 
breakout artist series for people that no one's heard of. And then you bring people in and then like you try and hustle people to come in to see you headline a show. Mm hmm. And uh, I'm like, I don't know. That sounds like too much. Where I've been doing comedy way too long, and I don't want to stand out on the street yeah. and hand out flyers. And I, I think yeah. that's to my detriment a little bit. Is mm -hmm. uh, I am kind of a diva, so I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to do that. You know. I also got into it today with. Uh, I didn't really get into it, but I'm going back to Indianapolis, and I'm not headlining the show in Indianapolis, and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I messaged the booker <laughs> being like, hey, man, what's the deal? And then I was like, you shouldn't you can't be doing that, Tim. You're crazy. <laughs> crazy person. Did you already push send, though. Yeah. Oh, OK. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I already. It's already it's already done. I mean, I did it in like a nice way. But I, you know, I'm still an insane man that thinks when he goes home, he should headline. Every yeah. Time. yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah, you want to. For sure. Yeah, you want to, but yeah. I mean, I guess my home club, home club would be the Laugh Factory in Chicago. Is that um, what we saw on Instagram? That was hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, we saw we saw a video. Was it? it was at uh, the Laugh Factory, and I didn't know there was one in Chicago because we've been to the one in. Uh, oh, I am Southern emotionally California. unavailable. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that's an old old clip. Oh my god, that was funny. That was yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's an old one. But yeah, the, I think is um, my home club in Indy closed. And then during Helium, the pandemic. No, they oh. closed way before that. The owners moved to L.A. and then they I think he just sold the building. Uh, and then Helium in Indianapolis doesn't really work me. And then I moved to Chicago and I just clicked with everyone at the Laugh Factory. And I, I would consider that my the Laugh Factory in Chicago, my home club. Oh, nice. Of all the clubs, because I like everyone that works there. I love the manager. And uh, I don't know. It's just good because Micah good and I are fit. going back. He gave us spots for the entire weekend. So we have like seven shows at the Laugh Factory. Oh, that's days, awesome. So. Yeah. Sweet. Now, have they come up with the um, schedule yet for the Idaho Comedy Fest? Do you know when I you're performing? Not. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm not as in the, here's the thing. I'm a very hands off kind of oh, guy. <laughs> I, John was like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah. And it took my girlfriend being like, Hey, can you figure out what's going on? I was just going to buy tickets to Idaho and then just go and then try yeah. to get spots somewhere else. If the thing didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Right. I, here I am. Yeah, so you're, just, do you not even know I'm what like, day you're performing? I think I, I I'm hoping every day. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what we were wondering if we I'm had hoping. Those. I'm hoping that they, they, he's. I know he sent out a thing that was like, um, uh, put in what you're available for, mm -hmm. which is like a very New York thing to do. No, oh, is most it? Other, yeah, most other festivals don't have you fill out an avails form for yeah. your festival you because just say all the time yeah well because yeah. you're just gonna be there yeah so they just put you on whatever right yeah yeah but um i think it makes it easier for them because that's how they're used to booking things so i yeah. said i was available and there was like a 5 p.m show a 7 p.m a 9 and 11 p.m show and I think the 5 p.m. shows were clean. So I said I couldn't do any of those. Yeah. And then I said I could do all the other shows. I was like, <laughs> I just, I can do I'm here. I do all of them. Yeah. yeah. So are you planning on being here the whole three days? Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. I'm going to be real. I'm going to get real drunk on Thursday. And then I'm going to be real hungover the rest of the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a classic festival move where yeah. <laughs> the very first night I get absolutely trashed. And then I feel like shit the, the rest of the festival. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds like, yeah. Now, does your girlfriend do the same? Oh, she, my girlfriend goes hard. <laughs> she, she goes hard in the paint. <laughs> Nice. She loves now, getting fucked is up. She and, the one I was. Does she have a podcast of her own as well? Uh, she used to, but she does not anymore. Oh, okay. She had one, uh, but then it got a little. Uh, it got a little dicey with how today is, you know. Yeah. And uh, she was worried that uh, she'd get in trouble because her and her because she's mean. Like you can't mean. really like <laughs> you can't like be mean anymore, and she's yeah. like no. Really, She's yeah. like real mean. She's mostly mean to me. 
<laughs> but, uh, so she thought she was going to be canceled. No, not not exactly. I think also the uh, partnership with her and her friend that were doing it, like they kind of uh, they kind of had too much stuff going on as well. Yeah. But yeah. now she's like, I don't know if I want to get back into being mean to people, you know, because <laughs> this was way before people were canceling. But she was just thinking about getting back into it. She's like, I don't know. I get I get I get so mean. And I was like, yeah, I think it's funny. I was like, I think it's funny. Yeah. The other day she was poking me in the stomach, woke me up, calling me the Pillsbury Doughboy. Oh my I'm God. Like, Michael, what the hell? And she was like, I'm trying to get you to lose weight. I think this will be motivating. Jeez. Or the complete Does she opposite. write for like roast battles or anything like that? She wrote, uh, she wrote a lot of jokes for the last roast, whatever the last roast was. Oh my God! That's on amazing. Comedy Central. Wow, oh, really? we probably saw it. Yeah, yeah. she was the last one. Was. The Alec Baldwin roast. Oh, oh shit. the Alec Baldwin one. Oh my okay. God! Yeah. She wrote a lot of jokes for that. She's a uh, she's a very good um, writer. That's okay. really cool. Yeah, she's really good at writing. I am more of a personality man myself. Yeah, <laughs> I don't bring it in the jokes department. People just kind of like hanging out with me, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you do obviously write because I've watched your your stand up, right? I yeah, but I've never sat down and written anything down. I just kind of oh, wing really? it, and I kind of oh. wing it, and then memorize how I did it, and then uh, just do it the exact same way that it worked every time. I don't really? know. They, they call that like writing on stage, where you yeah, have like I do that idea. a little. I do that, I guess, but I don't even record my sets, which I should do. Whoa. So you have a photographic memory? No, I'm just no. a dumbass, and I, Holy I, shit. I, I figure that sounds it out. terrifying. <laughs> I figure it out eventually because I'll get, uh, I'll do it enough, and then I'll figure out the right way to do it. Whoa! And then I'll write down. But I mean, I have like a list of things that remind me of the joke. So I'll have like a list of like one word that reminds me of each joke. Like fat lady, Q-tip. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Here, let's see. I can tell you the list right here. From Indiana, 12K a year, living in a basement, uh, missing, closing a door, pandemic is good, <laughs> dirty talking. Hey, there's your emotionally unavailable, uh, being someone's wife now, uh, mom's menopause, uh, pro bullying, wrestling story. And then I, oh, and then I have a, a new Tucker Carlson riff. Oh, do you? <laughs> it's good for about another week probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. do you do that you have to rotate stuff based on well like the tucker this? carlson thing i talk about because i live in like a real hipstery neighborhood in brooklyn mm. and i i'm double vexed up and i don't want to wear my mask outside so i don't do it yeah and everybody stares at me uh in the neighborhood and i'm like they stare at me in the neighborhood and they when you're outside it. yeah I'm Whoa. like, and they have accusing eyes like that. I watch Tucker Carlson and I'm going to rip the mask off a child's face. And, <laughs> yeah. Know, cause I, cause like when you like, I, cause I, I was, I'm like, I look like a guy who watches Tucker Carlson. And yeah. then I have a, then I just start naming off a bunch of facts and then I'm like, well, I'm his biographer and I actually like him. So, <laughs> but yeah. What is New I, York like right now in terms of that it's opening, right? Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's like the, some people are like, well, everybody, no, almost everybody wears their mask where you're supposed to, but now it's like half and half on the street. I'm in the, I'm in the uh, degenerate half. That doesn't <laughs> right. wear mask. I'm in the outlaw half. I feel like uh -huh. we have been too. As long as we're outside, we're like, fuck it. Yeah. If we're outside I mean, on the street or it's... at the park. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're good oh, yeah. on yeah. the mask, you know? Well, and then we got lunch today and it's like, and I, I mean, everyone's made this joke. I mean, it's possibly the most made joke in the pandemic, but you just sit down yeah. and then you take your mask off and then you can't get COVID, right? right. So, like, Corona goes away when you sit right. down. <laughs> right. So, and, and, and but then people are going to be like, you're not wearing your mask outside. I'm like, motherfucker, you're spreading it yeah. everywhere. Just give me a chair and I Yeah, we fine. just ate lunch next to each other. <laughs> yeah. That plexi the plexiglass next to you with all the air around it is not yeah, keeping the virus from getting to your neighbor. It's stupid. Yeah. It's like you yeah. either lit, you just gotta at, at some point. I don't want anybody to die. No. Really, you know? Yeah. 
But also, this is the Earth uh, bucking off a lot of people because <laughs> it's yeah. overpopulated. So, I at some point you but you just have to go back to living how life is. You know? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, really. Yeah. We shook. Oh, I shook somebody's hand today, and I wondered when that would come back. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, my oh, mom. I, shake, I shake hands all the time. I was a big handshaker before. Me too. I love it. I think it's so awesome. And we shook John I, B's hand. Yeah, we did. Oh, Johnny, that. Johnny, I'll shake your hand. Yeah. yeah. And so Jen. <laughs> so did yeah. Jen. Yeah. At the land. Okay. I try to jump ahead because I don't like getting. I don't like when people. I don't like being hugged. Yeah. So I try to jump you try ahead. Try to of catch the hug it. By, yeah, I give it. I give it. Intercept I give it a that hug. Shake. Yeah, but do you ever have those people that come in for the wide handshake? And you're like, oh shit, what They're are like, we oh, doing? Shit, are we hugging? <laughs> oh, I do the. I give them. I give them the old uh, Corey from. Uh, oh, like Corey Harrison from uh, on the back. Uh, uh, Pawn Stars. Oh, you ever okay, watch Pawn Stars? One. Like, <laughs> comes in like this. That's what I do. I do that to people when I'm leaving like a party or whatever, and I'm making like a real scene out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just go around and shake people's later. hands aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Who are yeah, you we've inspired had, we've by? Had parties, we've had parties here in our backyard. Have you really? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, you have an apartment with a backyard? Yeah, we got lucky. That's that's half the reason our apartment is so expensive because we have a very large backyard. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, how many square feet of. is your apartment? I think our apartment is... I want to say 1200 square feet. Okay. I want to say, but I do not think that is right. But I think the backyard is 1200 square feet. (laughs) Okay. And that's, that's huge in New York. I mean, it's a monstrous backyard for New York. Wow. Wow. And we're the only ones that get to use it. It's not like shared. Oh, wow. That's cool. So you have to mow it. Is it grass? it's, It's all concrete. Oh, nice. it's all like concrete and um, and there's rocks in the back. Perfect. Yeah, it's nice. There was a lot of gla- like just found glass. Also, it's like magical for some reason, like drugs just appear in our backyard. Really? Like one morning <laughs> we woke up, there was a vial of Coke in the backyard. Really? <laughs> another morning we woke up, there was an eighth of weed back there. I think you need a wow. camera. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I think uh, Maybe. what happens is uh, the people up at the top leave shit on their ledge oh and it falls off and then the wind blows it off oh, <laughs> and, and they like, get God free drugs <laughs> yeah wow yeah, so thin. did you do the it's coke and smoke the weed itself. what did you do the coke and smoke the weed uh i don't do coke because i already talk too much and i'm already kind of annoying <laughs> but you don't want to like smoke- amp it up yeah, I did smoke the weed, but the people who did do the coke here said it was the best coke they've done in a long time. Wow! Oh, so maybe you got to hook up with those upstairs neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! But so yeah, if it's, you were to it's leave your cool. front door, would you like be out in city? No. So no, I, I, I. It's more resident. Brooklyn's more residential. Oh, like okay. New York, New York is like city, city. Yeah. And then, uh, Brooklyn, I'm like it's all houses and stuff. Now, compared, probably I don't know where you live, but comparatively, it is but yes. Yeah, well, you yeah, walk relatively. outside. Yeah, we're in you Nampa, walk Idaho, the door, and there's probably forty people on the street walking around, but like there's no big buildings or anything. You know? Yeah, wow. yeah. You see, we go out our front door and there's no one walking no. around. <laughs> Everybody has a lawn. There's a sidewalk. It's like almost creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the people? It's just yeah, like I in the movie. I want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, is it tight movie? Well, is it that tight? That was hilarious. Is that, is oh, my that, God. Uh, Thanks. Just uh it's just a review show, right? So it could be movies, it could be products. Yeah, or- I, I just review anything. I was reviewing movies because I was like, what do people watch? And I was like, they like movie reviews, but then I don't really even talk about the movie or really review it that well. No, yeah. <laughs> and, and then people online are like, this kind of sucks. <laughs> it might like, seem like you're high. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just stupid. It really is like the <laughs> whole thing. I'm just kind of a dumb man. I like I I I live a very simple life. I'm not trying to. Oh okay. yes, you don't have a microwave. Is that a New York thing or just a you thing? 
Uh, that is an us thing. I think oh, Micah God. didn't want to get a microwave because it would take up too much space on the countertop that she would like to use. And I was like, that is fucking stupid. But we're not going to see like a <laughs> fist come into frame, right? No, she's not here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because the podcast I watched earlier, she actually came into the room. Oh, did she? <laughs> yeah, she oh, did. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but see, we don't see, we just have a, our okay. stove and all the, that's like all our kitchen space right oh, there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So we don't really have, I mean, it's yeah. supposed to go, it's supposed to go right. Here. Yeah. Oh yeah. The mic. What is that? A TV there? Where? Where you were pointing that uh shiny? Yeah. Square. Oh, that's just uh, shelving. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's where the microwave would go. I think that's uh, where the microwave is supposed to go. It's supposed to go up on the shelving, and then I think it has a hole where you can. But there's not enough space for all of all for all the shit we have, so we have to use that for um, dishes. <laughs> Ah, wow. so no microwave. I feel like that's a New York thing then. Yeah. I mean, yeah, was... you, you give up a lot of luxuries in New York just to have, but we could have a microwave. All we need to do is just buy one. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of apartments don't come with them. Yeah. No, and you can get one of those tiny ones too. I mean, you've got options. Listen, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said we can anti microwave get... or just anti Dude. the space. She's anti, she thinks it A will look ugly, which it probably will. <laughs> okay. And B, she's anti taking up the space on the counter. Ah, uh, okay. That's she's funny. very particular. Like there was an apartment, there was a super sick apartment that we didn't even look at because the backyard was shared. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. We can't, I mean, we once we went to the woods for a month in May last year, like literally a year ago today she couldn't live in a place without a backyard anymore. Oh, oh that really? was it wow yeah and is she, she has a native enough money. new yorker what is she no she's native? from arizona oh okay but she's lived here for i don't know 15 years for some crazy amount of time wow but she but after she was like i have to have a backyard i have to have somewhere i can go out and have my coffee in the morning i have to have this i'm like well <laughs> you have all the money so i can't say no you know right yeah <laughs> like i guess i'll put up with it <laughs> yeah if i put up with it i mean this is the best i've lived in 10 years yeah so okay. this is great for me and tell is... us about how rough it is <laughs> i mean you've done comedy for 11 years right yeah i've done comedy for 11 years and it'll be 11 just, years in october i mean and you have to go hard and grind and believe mm -hmm. in yourself and do all that without making shit right well, I mean, eventually you like start actually somebody pays you dollars. I mean, yeah, I mean, I make I made, you know, I made the year. My best year was in Chicago when I was working at the Laugh Factory and working on the road. I made probably twenty six thousand dollars right. doing stand up. Mm -hmm. And was For that a year? grind like a? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was featuring. But here, but I don't until you get like TV credits or until yeah. you get like a shit ton of followers, no one wants to fuck with you or pay you any money. So like, yeah, I started in Indianapolis. I was there for four <laughs> years and then I was like, well, I'm probably like one of the best people in Indianapolis because there's not very many. Right. And all the best guys had moved. Right. Mm. So then I was like, well, now I'm like the best guy and I wasn't very good. So I was like, well, I got to go. So I moved to <laughs> Chicago because it was close. And my buddies, Tom and Connor lived up there. Mm -hmm. And so I moved in with them. And then uh, in Chicago, I worked my way up to being like an in the city headliner where I would headline shows in the city. And then I would work the laugh factory almost every weekend. So I was making money doing that. Oh, and then nice. I would go on the road featuring for like big time headliners. Mm -hmm. And then I moved here and my life uh, crashed around me. Oh no. <laughs> because yeah. I had to start over again. And I was, I had become too much of a diva in my good life in Chicago, headlining, doing three shows a night for, oh, <laughs> for yeah. two years or whatever. So like for four years, I was in Chicago. And then for like the last two, I was probably doing three shows on like on average, probably two shows a night every night 
seven days a week, you know? Mm-hmm. So like that was, I, I, I got, I, and then my buddy Tom, cause even then, so in Indianapolis, I was working for my dad, which was nice. Yeah. Uh, cause I could afford a, a studio apartment for myself in Indianapolis, which was like $550 a yeah. month. It's like almost nothing, but there I was like, I got a car. I could afford my studio apartment. I could take time off to go on the road if I needed to. Then I had to move to Chicago. I didn't have a job in Chicago. So I lived in a closet. <laughs> I lived in a closet under the stairs. So I lived like Harry Potter. I was like under the stairs. <laughs> oh my God. And the, For the, reals. Yeah. But the people who lived upstairs, I don't not, there wasn't a single one of them under 300 pounds. So oh, nice. every time they went up the stairs, I thought the stairs were going to break <laughs> and I, they, they were just going to crush me under their immense weight. So <laughs> they were all huge. They gave us bed bugs. Oh, they were oh, um, then I moved, but okay. so after the, so I lived in the closet for two years. <laughs> then my buddy Dave had a line on a place uh, that was west in uh, Logan Square. And I had a real room with air conditioning and everything. And it was nice. So that was nice. So those last two years in Chicago, I had a real room. I was doing sets all the time. I was making money doing stand up. And that was good. And then Tom called me and he said, Tom, who I lived, Tom Takar, who I lived with before. He called me and he goes, uh, hey, man, we got a room opening up for 500 in Brooklyn. And I knew like I do that in the in my act where I say, but I knew that it was a space in a basement. Yeah. That I was sharing yeah. With another I actually, I, yeah. I, I saw your uh, set about this. <laughs> so yeah. You knew when you said that. Yeah, I knew because I, I had visited them before. So I knew, what, <laughs> I, what, like, I knew what the room was. But you got to you got to feign like you don't know anything in your act. So. Right. Because people are like. Because if I was like, and I knew that people were like, okay, well then I don't care. Right? <laughs> yeah. But if I'm, if I act like he tricked me, they're like, oh, this is a better story. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. And so I share that. I was sharing that with Jeff R. Curry, who's going to be at the festival. Oh, cool. He's uh, and he's a very funny comedian. So I was sharing that with him and I lived there for a year and that was, and then I started working as a, um, a mover and trying to get sets and that just there's so many comedians in new york are they it's really just, it's, it's just non-stop a, there's a million of them wow. and it's so hard to get spots if no one knows who you are so it's just hang out hang out hang out and i'm like i'm almost 35 and i'm like i don't have it you know like i ain't got it in my bones to go out every single night and and push. hang out at stuff that I'm not getting on, you know, but yeah. do it. I've been doing it recently now that I'm double vaxxed up, but, um, yeah, but yeah. So I was living down in that basement working as a mover. I had a rat crawl on me while I was oh, sleeping. God, <laughs> That part of the story, when I'd say that is true. Oh my God. Where a rat crawled on me. And I was just like, I will like my life. See, here's how hard my life has been doing stand up. I just woke up and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> you were oh. like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, Oh rat. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. What's I next? Gotta go, I got to go back to sleep. I got to work as a mover in the morning. So oh I was like, God. Oh, it, you know, so that's what Chris and I talk about, like comedians, you guys, it's a pat. It has to be like beyond a passion. It's all you're thinking about because you have like, it's a massive risk with like little reward for forever. Sure. Know? But I mean, now here's the thing. I, if I was smarter, uh, I would figure out how to create there. The, the comedians now, the ones younger than me that are getting like popular, they know how to create their own audience. Like I'm doing it the old school way, which is the bad way now. Oh, <laughs> That's really? The bad okay. way to do it because I mean, you just so go everybody's out. online. Yeah, because like the only like the last person to do it this way, it took him 30 years and it was Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, geez. We listen to that. Pete and And Sebastian. Yeah. yeah, And he all he was like, he's like, yeah, I just kept getting emails and kept getting emails and kept getting emails. And just for like years and years and years. And now everybody knows who he is because he would go out and murder or whatever. I've never seen stand up. I don't oh, really? watch stand up. I've I've I refuse to watch it. I've done too much of it and seen too much at like shows and stuff. I'm like I just can't 
sit at home and watch a stand-up. <laughs> yeah. <play>. yeah. <laughs> uh, who are your influences in comedy? Well, I started out loving Dave Attell. And of mm. course, I was a little Dave Attell boy doing little Dave Attell type jokes. Yeah, he's amazing. Because he's my favorite comedian. I yeah. think Dave Attell yeah. is the best. And then, you know, Louie was great. He mm. was one of my favorite comedians. And then um, Mitch Hedberg. Oh, I also yeah. liked, uh, I saw Mitch Hedberg St- and Stephen Lynch live. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. So that was really cool. I remember that. That was back when Mitch Hedberg and my friend Ben were still alive. Because I went with uh, two people at that show are now dead. Whoa. So, wow. so I went with them. Um I went with Ben to see Mitch Hedberg and uh, that was really good. Um, who else did I, who else do I like growing up? I liked Jezelnik for his first album. Yeah. I thought his first album was good. I mean, there was that like right when I started in 2010, that was like that boom of like Chicago, of like of comedy albums. So it was like yeah. Kinane, Hannibal, mm. Aziz, um, and then Anthony Jeselnik. And I love the Canaan album. I liked I liked the Hannibal album and I loved the um Jeselnik. Jeselnik album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those I, I really like his uh little uh Comedy Central uh I think it was maybe a half hour or something way a long time ago. Jeselnik? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jeselnik, yeah. And just really loving his comedy. I mean, he came out as this totally egotistical. Yeah. Guy. And he still does. But even yeah. then, I He's think amazing. it was even more yeah. egotistical in his yeah. act, at least. He's a really good joke writer. I, I like that because I'm not a big, I'm not a, like a joke writer. So I like when people are really good joke writers. And then, uh, oh, and Nick Swartzen. And mm. Yeah. Of course. I cannot forget Norm Macdonald is oh, him, and David, yeah. him and David Tell are my two favorite comedians. I oh, think of nice. all time. Yeah. But growing Norm up, I we only watched because I think my dad thinks that he's like an old black guy. Like my oh, dad, really? no, my dad. Like, well, first of all, my dad in Indianapolis. If you know, like, if you run into any old black guy, they all know my dad. Oh shit! So he like knows every old black guy in the city, and then. Growing up, our comedy that we watched was Bill Cosby, uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, Jesus Christ, Eddie Murphy, yeah. and yeah. Richard Pryor was, yep. all, was all we watched <laughs> at our house. And yeah. then when Cat Williams started getting popular, my dad's like, yeah. this is my new favorite guy. Cat <laughs> Williams, really? Wow. Dang. My dad loves Cat Williams. That's, oh, that's awesome. Funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. Because uh, speaking of that, I have actually attempted to watch Cat Williams with Wendy. Yeah, here. and I was like, Fuck. so I grew up in the Bay Area in California. She grew up in Juneau, Alaska. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Uh, I was uh, attempting. I wanted to show her Cat Williams. So I thought he was fucking hilarious. I think he's so funny. Yeah, and she's watching it, and she's like, "Why is he so angry? Why is he yelling? <laughs> yeah. Why is he so mad?" Because pimping's hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're from Juneau, Alaska? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Have you been there? No. Oh, you should totally oh, go. Oh, another place you gotta. Yeah. Do I gotta go to Alaska. That's. Uh, you gotta go to the little... Triangle Club Bar. My friend Leanne Thomas owns it. It's okay. amazing. Yeah. I'll go there. Yeah. It's a cool place. Uh, Jessica Michelle Singleton is a comedian in LA. She's from Alaska. Oh, nice. She's oh, really? comedian I know from Alaska. Nice. What was yeah. it like growing up in Alaska? It was uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. We had a glacier in our town. It was like in my backyard, but it was all normal. You, right. You didn't realize how amazing it was until I went out, you know, out. We didn't have uh, like our McDonald's, the sign. It doesn't it doesn't raise up. It's just a little sign on the ground, a little M because everybody voted that it wasn't cool enough for Alaska to have like yeah. the raised M with the arches. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Didn't get... Wow. We Alaska, have no arches Burger for King. Alaska. huh? Yeah. Or at least Juno, because it's the capital. We used to have like a Burger King or, or Wendy's where you could uh, drive your boat up and get <laughs> fast food. And then that is sick. Off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love I like boat culture. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. I watch a lot of uh, Deadliest Catch. Oh, oh shit. Jesus. Discovery <laughs> Plus. I, yeah. We just got I've that. Seen, this is the craziest shit is. 
this is, I think my, my, the saddest thing that I can say about myself is I have literally seen every single episode of the deadliest catch. I've oh, I was wow. just telling him miss- how cool it was. Cause if you go to Juno, walk the docks and you will see like Jonathan's boat in yeah. the Juno Harbor. And I was saying it is so amazing. Like this guy's on yeah. discovery plus. Yeah. And me, Ooh. I'm just like, I've never seen an episode or I've seen only like bits and pieces here and there. But it's really cool. I love it. I love it. But I like a show where it's just a manly job that I could never do. No, you know fuck saying? no. And even like the chicks on, I'm like, those chicks are fucking some cool dudes, you know? Yes, like, they are. Yeah. Oh, my shit. God. It's you throw that thing wrong and it catch your leg oh, yeah. you're over the side. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. Like that forged in fire. Like, I feel like I could do forged in fire, but I'm like, uh, I'd have to like practice and get a forge and all that shit. But uh, I get too hot. It'd be too hot for me. I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sweating through your car hearts. (laughs) I don't like being hot. So I'm like, that's out for me. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, man. Yeah, deadliest catch rules. Uh, that's very cool because I like seeing all the big boats. I'm like a little autistic kid. Mm. I like to look at the trains and I like to see the big boats. And I like to yeah. in Wilmington, North. I did a festival in Wilmington, North Carolina, and you could go on a battleship. Uh, they just have an old battleship in Wilmington, North Carolina. You could go in. I got in trouble because I went in the park. So you're supposed to go in and the guy like grabbed me and he pulled me out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was like, I was just looking around. Man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I paid to get in here. I can't see the full boat. And he goes, no. Jeez. And so, uh, yeah. So we saw, big, like, I was like, this is so cool. It's a big battleship. <laughs> yeah. And uh, But then after that, we went to, there's also a snake, like, it's like a snake zoo. Oh shit! Really? I don't know if you guys like snakes, but uh, my girlfriend like hates them. She's so scared of snakes. Now I get it because I'm terrified of bees. I can't even look at bees on TV, yeah. and she's the same way with snakes. But this, but spiders. Snakes, what? <laughs> yeah. Spiders. Yeah. Oh yeah, spiders get you. Yeah, they're scary. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, this dude, we went. We were told by somebody in the town that if you go Sunday at 3 p.m., or maybe it was Saturday at 3 p.m., the guy feeds the snakes. Oh, God. And he does it. So all the snakes are in, like, a big tank or whatever, and there's tons of tanks. And supposedly, the, first of all, there's all the most d- venomous snakes in the world. He has all of them and supposedly caught them all by hand. That's the rumor. <laughs> wow. That they tell you, but um, the guy's like this surly dude and they, he just puts up a little like makeshift fence oh and he lets the snake come out onto the ground <laughs> and he has a bucket of like really hot water that he has rats in like dead rats in a bucket of really hot water. And the, the water has to be really hot so that the snake, uh, because they have thermal sensors oh so they have they make the rat really hot so that the snake's attracted to the rat and not the guy yeah we but hope. He's in there but he's in there fucking with the snake with the rat and oh like make, he makes it like a little whole little show oh, and geez. it was so cool and then the final one was he so he did he fed like a king cobra he fed some other big snake. And then at the end, he fed uh, an anaconda. Oh, my God. And it was me and a bunch of comedians. And then, like, a family with three children. <laughs> and they're traumatized now, and, right? Well, well, yeah, after this. So the guy <laughs> pulls out of the bucket. He pulls this big white rabbit for oh, the anaconda. Geez. And he just whips it into the thing. And this little boy goes, is that the Easter bunny? Oh, and, no. <laughs> and the guy who owns the place just turned to him. He goes, yeah, it is. <laughs> and then walked away. I was like, what? Oh, an ass. That kid's <laughs> fucked up for life. Yeah. I've never seen so many comedians laugh so hard in my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, this dude rules. <laughs> Yeah, That's speaking cool. of, uh, we heard that the after parties for comics are going to be raging in the Idaho oh, yeah. Comedy Fest. 
They are, I bet they are. So you got to be ready, not just for Thursday night, but apparently Friday as well. Yeah, maybe Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, that's the that's the so the key is to not blow your wad Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. That is the key. Now, I've known that for years. <laughs> You've known it. I have never done not- it. Blow your wad. I've never. I. I mean, I've had like because I like I do. I've done the um. I any weekend I work with a headliner that's like my friend. Like if I work with like Dave Wait or something, mm-hmm. me and him go out Thursday night, get all fucked up, and then Friday we're just a wreck. <laughs> and then Friday night everybody's like, "You guys going out again tonight?" And we're like, uh, <laughs> "I guess." Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then uh like Limestone Comedy Festival, I I never I never had my voice by Saturday night. My voice oh, really? was gone by Saturday <laughs> by Saturday night cuz I get cuz I'm a loud drinker guy cuz I'm okay. half Irish, half Italian, so I can drink a lot, but I just get louder while I do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like right. I cuz the other day, like I went to the Yankee game, I had like I don't know twelve beers or something. Holy shit, that was like six hundred bucks, wasn't it? Uh no, because the Yankee game got um, delayed, and there's this like bodega by Yankee Stadium where you oh. can where you can go. There's like a secret back area. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You go in and you buy your beers, and then you walk back like good fella style (laughs) area and you can drink your beers back there oh cool so we we were we were pre-gaming there so we got there at noon to pre-game and the game was supposed to start at one and then it got pushed back to 3 30 so for like for like three and a half hours we were were pre-gaming we're just downing like tall boys and i probably had about seven of them while we were back (laughs) there and i was like and then we smoked weed and i was like um i was like i'm fucked up and then we went. The then we went. The game had some more beers. I think I paid for all of them. I don't know. I hate Terrible. that when you don't know till you check your credit card receipt yeah. or like yeah. statement. <laughs> then, uh, then Micah and I got home, and then I drank more beers here. Holy crap! And then I fell asleep, and then I missed a party I was supposed to go to Sunday because I couldn't get myself out of bed. Oh, oh God! <laughs> but how old are you? I'm 34. 34. You can still do that. It's really painful for us. Yeah. (laughs) Well, now I feel like I I know what my limit is and I stop there. I mean, I haven't had a I haven't had a hangover in years. So I have. Yeah. That's impressive. It's way more painful as you age. (laughs) I have a hangover almost every time I drink. But I know my limit. And what it is, but I refuse to, uh, I refuse to step you like, I can't drive 55, you know? Yeah. So I, I know what the limit is, but I'm like, man, I'm having Fuck fun. It. But- Once you're having fun, you're like, you, you push it. Well, yeah. I think yeah. I'm so good at it now is that I know my limit, but my limit is, you know, kind of pretty far past other people's limit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> and so yeah so you know i can do that and i'll be i can get up at you know 5 30 the next day and go to work yeah true yeah that's impressive because i used to do it i i remember days of throwing up in a trash bag while i was driving a forklift around oh, <laughs> and then my boss my boss slash dad was like are you hung over i'm like i'm sick and he's like you're hung yeah. over you stupid asshole yeah. Yes, You're I like, am. Smell like alcohol. Bag, driving a, a forklift. Yeah, <laughs> I still did it pretty good. I don't know. I'm a good forklift driver, so I don't know. I worked at a cannery one season, and you got so tired there that people ran over their own foot with a forklift and had to be oh, like wow. medevac out. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So you're pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a solid. I mean, it was just me back there, so I wasn't really gonna hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but and I remember another time I was real hungover at work, and here my problem is I got like a bad stomach, so 
I d- like if I'm hung over, I got to be near a bathroom because oh, I'm going to I'm going to take like 900 shits in a day. Oh, God. Um, but one morning I was real hung over at work and I was my dad was like, go get the mail from the mailbox. And I thought I had to fart and I just shit all, oh, all over. I just shit all down my leg, got in my sock and everything. And I walked in. I was like, I think I'm sick. I shit myself and it's in my socks. And he goes, you're you hung get over the mail? again. <laughs> He goes, there's other pants upstairs. Go put oh them on and go home, take a shower, and then come back in new work clothes. And boy, oh boy, did I take a while taking a shower. At yes. Home. I blamed it on traffic, but he knew. He knew <laughs> yeah. I was watching prices, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a wash off shame. <laughs> Horrible. That was a horrible day. So how much uh, traveling do you do for comedy? Like, well, you- I used to do a lot. Oh, you did? Mm. Pri- but like then, pre-pandemic? Pre-pandemic, I, well, pre, pre-New pre York, I was, pre before living here, I was doing a lot of traveling. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't done as much. I have a lot of traveling this summer, but it's mostly because I'm sick of the city and I wanted to leave. So I've... Yeah book shit for myself and my brother's getting married so i have that too oh nice so i gotta go back to indy i gotta go back to indy in june and i gotta go back to indy in july and then i'm going to chicago in june but what about austin dude what what about austin i mean i go to austin but i don't give a shit you think that's a thing what do you think of that well I mean, I was talking to someone about it and they were like, I might split my time between New York and Austin to be seen in Austin. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But, but then I was talking to my other friend and he's like, nothing's going to be better than New York. He's like, you can move to Austin just because Joe Rogan's in Austin, but nothing's going to, it's still not going to be better than than having the stage i think there's going to be like a push like the joe rogan kill tony thing he's been on kill tony a lot lately and people are like coming i mean uh, tony hinchcliffe just got himself in a little bit of trouble yesterday i don't know what happened Oh, let's hear about this oh wow there there's a young man a young asian man Mm -hmm. posted a clip of tony hinchcliffe he brought up tony hinchcliffe and tony hinchcliffe Called him several racial slurs and a yeah. uh, bunch of shit like that. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Now, the guy only showed the part of the set where Tony uh, was very offensive. Now, yeah. I'm not making any excuses for Tony, but we I want to see the rest of that set, baby. I want to see what he was talking was, about. Was that on a kill Tony? Because no, I mean, it was oh. it, just, it was just it was on this dude's. Um, it was on this dude's Twitter, Pang Dang, P E N G D A N G. Interesting. Because okay. Tony makes a lot of jokes like that on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he does. He makes. Well, a lot of- yeah. He. Well, he. Whatever race you are, he will take you down. He, oh, he's I mean, basically roasting you as you stand there after your one minute. Yeah. So your race. If that was taken that. <laughs> out of context, that would be. Very- well, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't like him. I don't know what the context was. It was really it, bad. And here's the thing. I'm a guy that says a lot of bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. And these and even this, I was like, ooh. Oh, really? Dang. It, it, was, it was rough it. for it was rough for me. And I'll say, I'll say almost anything. Even okay. if you were like under the guise of joking. Like it was, it didn't even come off like a joke. Here's the thing. I would never say what he said on stage. Wow. Okay. Now I might, if I'm good enough friends with, Oh, if I'm good enough friends with, somebody, yeah, to totally in roast my, them. in my backyard, maybe yeah. if it's understood that we know that I am completely joking yeah, and that person is completely fine with it. Right. Yeah. That then I will do it, but okay. I will I, I I don't even say I don't say hard F's on stage anymore. No. I try not to say I try not to say hard R's on stage anymore. Yeah. I try not. I mean, I'd say I because I like I'll say them, but like you know, I'm not doing it on stage. Yeah, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a good guy that isn't getting canceled because I had to delete all my old podcasts. It's gone. 
Because we were trying to be the most offensive podcast you could be. Oh, God. We were trying to. It was back when we lived in Chicago. We were doing like a little tongue in cheek, be offensive thing. And then. Yeah. But that was the time when everyone was being offensive. Exactly. That's the problem is people aren't equating that that's how things were in the 80s and then the 90s and how things changed, you know. Well, and- it, yeah. And this was during and then and no one talks about the problem is. Everyone talks about, well, that's bad for right now, what you did in 2014, right? Yeah. But it's not With, now. Right. It's not now. Yeah. But what Tony Hinchcliffe did was last right week. Now. Dang, so, we have to see so that. that one's so that one's where you're like, oh, you know? Yeah. Cr- mm. Yeah. Cringy. Yeah. Dang. And then, but like my shit, I like the way I would ever uh argue it, I'm like, first of all. When we were doing all this shit, roast culture was like the top thing in comedy. Yeah. Right? It was like, this person looks like this. This yeah, gay guy is totally gay break him gay. down. And then it's like, blah, blah, blah is the R word or whatever. So yeah. that was, and that was on TV. Yeah. 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 It was normal. And so when we were doing, and then we took our shit just a little bit higher than that, like, come to, like, we try to do, like uh we were doing like a come town thing mm-hmm. we had been st- we started it before come town did it's not like we were you know copying them but it's yeah. just like the same it basically was the same thing uh-huh. mm. and so i was like well listen i gotta delete all these episodes yeah. <laughs> first of all I gotta burn the, this computer actually <laughs> first of all our producer our producer who had everything died oh god so i'm like so I'm like, well, it, Dave's dead. Hanging out, he's hanging out with the devil. So I'm like, I can't. I I don't even know where all the files are. I it took me. I'm gonna have for, to kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> it took me forever to get like into the. I had to like call like Podbean or whatever and be oh, like, oh god. I had to be like, hey, this guy's dead, and I need <laughs> uh, I need to get into these files and like delete yeah. them. And they were like. Well, can you prove that he's dead? I was like, I can get you on the phone with his crying wife. And they were like, okay, <laughs> right, we'll get you in or whatever. And I, oh, it took me a little while to do it. And I was just like, I got to delete. It. I can't fucking have these out here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now that everybody's getting in trouble. But you seriously, have to- everybody. So they're not available anywhere. No, you can't find them. I've, I've done my best to I did. I, I did everything you could to keep them from being out there. Wow. wow. Jeez. We've talked about that. Like our only fear really is our family at this point. <laughs> oh, oh. Like <laughs> seriously, you can say some random shit and people will be like, you're out. I mean, yeah. one person can get pissed and you're over. And with you guys, like you could have 11 to 20 years in a career and it's done. And that's bullshit. Like, yeah. But I mean, so the thing is, is like, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. So, so uh, there's two things you can do, right? Yeah. If everybody gets mad at you on Twitter and is like, hey, you suck. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's just everybody on Twitter, right? Because yeah. like, look at Louis. Louis yeah. got exactly. Louis is he got coming canceled. back. He's back. Yeah. Yeah. And then he went out and did the Midwest and sold out every single yes. show. Yeah. So it's like, is was he really that canceled? It's like you hear a lot of people talk about how they are mad yeah but th- that is a very small majority of the people who are actually buying yeah the product. yeah the actual fans and i would say out. probably i mean and this is just a an educated guesstimate that like 50 percent of his fans never even heard about <laughs> yeah. what happened i would honestly you know delia and callen i mean i feel like if they had shows people would come out yeah, yes. like, Delia no, was gone for like they, six months. Delia would sell out, and Callen yes. would sell out. Yeah. Callen sold out in Indianapolis, like oh, did he? right after it happened. Yeah, dang. Oh wow. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I you know what? I'd 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 raise that up. I'd raise it up to about seventy five percent of Louis fans. They probably heard about it, but I would say ninety percent of them did not care. Didn't give a shit. Yeah. And seventy five percent of them were probably just like, "He did what? I don't give a shit. He's in my town. I don't. <laughs> He's <care."> funny. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So like, but that's if you have a fan base. Like now, me, I'm not going to get canceled because no one knows who the fuck I am. And you have like thirteen thousand followers on Instagram. I bought all those followers. Oh, really? <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. I bought them to be is funny. It, is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> it was like a hundred dollars. No way. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought it'd be funny if I bought a bunch of followers and then I did. How do you do that? You just go on a website. I mean, they're all bots or whatever. They're not like, oh, real people. I got you. Wow. But you can buy likes, you can buy followers, you can buy. You can, if you have enough money, you can make it look like you are an internet celebrity. Holy yeah. shit, that's crazy. But yeah, I, I was, I was worried for a second. I was like, maybe these guys asked me to do the thing because I have a, I bought a bunch of followers and they're gonna be mad. No, when, no, no, no. We were, we were when, actually when like the, when the numbers, at when the numbers don't spike. You, no, yeah. no, we were looking at YouTube and looking at your followers and like, why aren't the followers watching their YouTube and. Like oh, yeah, we struggle I've, with YouTube viewers and like it's cr- it's crazy trying to get people to watch your fucking shit. Yeah, hey, it is, watch. Really. it's a grind. It's, it's hard to do. I mean, I think the trick is to do other people's stuff and be interesting enough to where those yeah. people like you. Yeah. Yep. But at the same time, I don't think I like I'm funny. And I've got some interesting stories, but like, you know, I'm not like Ian Fidance. Like he's got like people like Ian because he's has crazy stories because he's sober now. And he has insane stories of how fucked up he got all the time. And Joe then he's got esque. What? Well, that's yeah, Joe. Yeah, Lisk. it's like yeah, yeah, he has like like his whole life is a story for risk. Yeah. And then he's got other stories like where he's banging, you know transgendered uh women but he likes that they have big dicks or whatever you know stuff yeah. like that yeah. and people are like that's very interesting and i'm like well i lived in a closet yeah and they're like well that's fine i guess you know did anything interesting happen in the closet I'm like, yeah not really i put a put an air conditioner in there <laughs> no but i definitely think that's a thing because honestly most of the u.s can't relate to that we can't sure you know, we can't the we went to New York once and we we're like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, we were prepared. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a great time. But yeah, yeah it was totally awesome. different from Idaho. Oh, my you God. Know? <laughs> All the experiences. So if you shell just, shock you, if you're not ready for it. Yeah. Especially down the street and how many people are just around. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We're like people. Fuck. Yeah, all over the. And place. then like today, you know, if you if you're you're coming from Idaho, I don't know your homeless population in Idaho. I would say it's probably what 80, 90 percent. And then, uh, <laughs> but here, like today, we were playing basketball, and this dude just started. You know, he just started rolling his like cart into the middle of the basketball <laughs> court and smashing it with a stick and screaming. Jeez. <laughs> You know, calling all calling us like yeah. like like gay f's, and we were like, "What the hell is happening on the basketball?" Yeah. Trying to play. And then uh, but, I work at a psych hospital, so that's not oh, okay. Me. Yeah, yeah, so you're all right with that, but so but like and then we just stood there and watched him and laughed, you know. But like yeah. you come from, you know, Ohio, and that's like, and you're that's your first experience. Yeah, you, exactly. yeah. And I'm like, this just happens. <laughs> Every, during our basketball just game, like a time off during halftime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is our little halftime show. We liked it. We <laughs> paid him to be here. Next, we got dogs catching frisbees. <laughs> oh, dude, we have to talk about the picture where you're sitting naked on the bed. The picture where I'm sitting With naked your laptop, on the bed. I think. On no, you have boxers on, I believe. I have boxers. Oh, I don't hold naked. on. Hold on. Let me find it. How it far was, down? It super wait, wait. looked naked. I can. And I have, uh, a, have, I have a post on, ready yeah. to go out and you're naked. Oh, maybe I magicked his underwear off. I don't know. Let me see. I think I, uh, let me see if I can. Oh. Let's see. Back is it? It's a ways. Oh. Yeah. On the bed. Let's see. Hmm. I feel like you went too Let's, far. There's that. There's my mom. Oh, this the is it in black and white? No, no, oh. you don't even remember the time you posted well, on Instagram. Like there were more than one times. Yeah. You, okay, I gotta find this then. This is very important. I've uh, I've posted not not like on Instagram, but where the hell is it? 
Oh, there it is. Oh, you found it? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Put that up. With your camera. socks on. Yeah, let's. With my socks on. Uh, it's pink and. Can you see that? No. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> that was a picture my girlfriend at the time took of me. No. Did my girlfriend take it or did Dave take it? <laughs> I feel like Dave I, took it. I think Dave took it. I was sitting on my bed. Yeah. Looking really fat. And Dave <laughs> took the picture. And uh, he was like, I bet you won't put that on Instagram. And I was like, I bet I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah, I just did it. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. It wasn't, there was nothing special to it. It was just me. Oh my and God. Like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put that on it on the internet. I don't give a shit. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does your uh, girlfriend uh, do now? She, you said she's writing right now for the MTV uh, Awards. Cool. Um, she's writing for the MTV Awards. Right? I still can't even find the picture. Sorry. Hold on. Let me get less distracted by looking at pictures of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She, right now she's writing well she has two jobs she works for comedy central oh okay. uh she writes branded content for comedy central so like if you're ever watching the daily show or you're ever watching like something on comedy central and there are, you, there's like a little interstitial that's like 45 seconds yeah. or a minute long and it's like the daily show was brought to you by pringles yeah. and then there's that? like a thing where like Ronnie Chang or somebody is like doing something with Pringles. Yeah. She made that. So oh, like, Oh, that's okay. cool. Yeah. So she like either wrote or directed or had some little hand in something with that, you know? Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So like anything where they're like, uh, um, South park, they don't, they won't do anything with it. It's mostly everybody just wants to be part of the daily show. Yeah. So yeah. it's like Petco, is a proud sponsor of the daily show. And then <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, daily show person being like, is your dog uh, stupid or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Listen, that's why she does. it. I know. But yeah. yeah, so she does that. And that's like her full-time job. And she's really good at that. Um, and then right now she's working with um, Bonnie McFarlane writing for the, or writing for the MTV awards for Nikki. Wow. Blade. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Fun. they're all in L. So she got flown out to LA. They're all hanging out in LA doing LA shit. I'm here watching the cat, making sure the cat's all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody's got to do it. Well, somebody's yeah. got to be around not having a job, making sure the cat's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's the cat going to do when you come to Idaho? Well, we're going to have our buddy Trey watch the cat, and <laughs> oh, she's nice. not going to be happy at all because she is. Yes, little sleepy. She is not happy. Hold on. I think I can. Let me see if I can. Here, kitty, Shut kitty. Chloe, do you see her? Oh, yeah. I see her in the chair there. She's like a just a black mass. Yeah. She's just a <laughs> big lump. She's just a big lump. But she's been, uh, since we have the backyard, she goes outside and hunts birds. But oh, she's wow. been, uh, she's been a little depressed since Mike has been gone. Oh. So oh, she wow. just sleeps on the chair and then comes in she's and like, wakes oh, me up while I'm sleeping. Still? <laughs> what? She's like, oh, it's you still? Yeah. Where's my yeah. mom? <laughs> yeah, she tolerates me and she loves Mike. Yeah, she's like, oh, you feed me. Yeah. yeah yeah she's You're like I, she goes hey fat boy it's food time you know <laughs> yeah. and, right yeah. i feed her and then she goes and sleeps by herself she when mike is not here she will snuggle with me a little bit but you mike and it's... her i mean mike has had her for eight years oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Them, no, so. she's not just like one no she's sucking up to you a little bit <laughs> a little bit just for food and because yeah. she's not getting She's not getting the 13 hours of cuddling that she gets with Micah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh let's, I, I really want to talk about that fucked up night that he had. Oh, oh, yes. You had a fucked up night. This one here? <laughs> yes. Oh, maybe. Okay, this I learned about from watching your I, podcast. Yeah. Uh, oh. About when like, you took how the, do you rebound from this? 
you took the uh you took an uber to the wrong club oh that yeah. was that sucked that like, that was sucking that was like two sundays ago okay yeah i just watched your how do you like today. mentally rebound from that shit and then oh. you made it to the correct club but then bombed and and it was canceled <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, well, because here's the thing: what's how I rebound from that? That's like not even close to the first time that kind of shit has ever happened. <laughs> so it's like I'm just like, oh, fuck, oh, we're up here again. again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a real bummer because there's two. It was, and they weren't even like it wasn't even like a club. It was just a show at a bar. Yeah, so the show was at the Brooklyn Public House. And I didn't know that there were two Brooklyn public houses. There's possibly more. I had no idea. So I go to one. So I'm over by my, and here's the worst part is I had just done a show on a roof. Yeah. That was a 10 minute walk from my house. Oh, fuck. So like, if I didn't do the show at all, I could have just gone home. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to, all the way to Fort Green from Williamsburg. If anyone, if anyone in your in, in your in, if any of your listeners really enjoy uh, uh, geography, yeah. I go from <laughs> Williamsburg to Fort Green. A lot of geography, that cost man. me thirty three dollars. Oh god! To get there. Oh god! Yeah. Then I'm like, oh fuck! This is the wrong spot. Oh my god! So I hop. So then, but I didn't. I didn't want everyone who was in front of the first Brooklyn Public House to see me get another car. So I went right. around the corner because, of course, I'm an idiot, and I, in my brain, I'm like, uh, "Oh yeah, everyone noticed you get out of that car." Of course, they're watching. They're all staring at you. They now will know what, what happened. So I go around the corner. No one is. No, I don't even think anyone knew I was on the street. So I go around <laughs> the corner to get another car. Then that car cost me because I had to be at the show. I was already late for the show. Oh I was God. already late. I feel and like that I, was super car, stressful. Yes. And oh. I'm never late. Oh, God. I'm never, ever late for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I had told him that I was going to be late because I had another show. Mm -hmm. uh, but I so I get in the other car that cost thirty dollars. Oh my I get God. to the other Brooklyn public house and the guy goes, oh, yeah. Ah, I meant to message you. Show's canceled. No one. Oh my god! He's like, no one showed up, so we're just gonna do an open mic, and we'll just do an open mic, and then we can just do our material so for you, each other. And I was like, you oh, tried to roll least, with it, and which is which is my my least favorite thing that a show does is like, well, we're here. Might Why as well we just open mic? It. And I was like, man, I've gotten enough out of enough stuff. I don't need to do my stand up, but. I was like, well, I paid $60. Oh I just bought God. a beer. I'm going to have another couple beers because I paid $60 to be what here. What the fuck at this point? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I'm going to have a few more beers. So I was like, so I guess I'll sign up to do the open <laughs> mic. And then I do the open mic and fucking eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was doing a bunch of new stuff that doesn't have punchlines and also I don't think makes much sense. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing like a but thing about laughed. Like, I was, I, and no one, and the girl before me was from Indiana, and she was like, You're also from Indiana? I was like, Damn, Indiana <laughs> people not knowing who I am is really fucked up. I thought it was like, I was like, My name should precede me in Indiana if you start a comedy there. Yeah. But, um, but that's just my ego, and that's why I'm a crazy person. Like, my ego's like, She should know who I am. She's from Indiana. And that's also the same ego that's like, well, these people on the street probably going to see you get in another car. I look like a fucking idiot. So I better go around the corner, you know? It's the same it was, yeah. ego when I ski down a ski hill. I think I'm an Olympic, an Olympic skier. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. All the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I understand that kind of ego. I feel like it keeps you going. It helps. It, it, you, I, you absolutely have to have it. Yeah. You have to have an inc a crazy amount of delusion. Yeah. Like, I understand how delusional I am you have for the to fact be that, for the fact that all of my friends are doing well and have been on TV and I still haven't done anything. Oh, God. So, oh. And I still have to be like, well, I'm just as good. I'm as good as most of Do them. You think TV is really it though. Well, I, it mean, doesn't, it... I mean, they just have credits. They have yeah. 
they have people have noticed them they have gotten things. yeah so know? that's a thing but it's not how it used to be right it's not like getting on carson or something no 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 it doesn't matter at all it only no. matters in it only matters in the stand-up community when it comes to people booking Same. you on shows yeah like yeah. no one's coming to any of their shows because they saw them on Conan exactly. or they saw them on James Corden, you know? Yeah. They were watching YouTube. Right. So, but honestly, like my buddy, Jeff, Jeff Sheen, he just did dry bar and people yeah. might come to his show because he did that. Oh, nice. Wow. Like that, get, that yeah. gets millions and millions of views. Well, yeah. What do you think about how like Mark Norman put his, uh, his special out on YouTube? Is that it's a smart. thing? I mean, that's what everybody's doing. Yeah. That's what you got to yeah. do. I mean, I'm going to make some type of special that will probably get, you know, a one one hundredth of what Mark Norman's special. No, but you keep, yeah. you keep pushing it. He ha he yeah. hasn't stopped, honestly. He, keeps, no. he is just, he is on he a hired, rampage. He for... hired a camera crew just to follow him around to like exactly. all of his spots, which I can't afford to do. But yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, uh, if you could, I, 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 I was talking to Chris because we were actually supposed to interview Mark Norman in Salt Lake City because we went to a show and then he bailed. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I felt like since Mark went on that tour with Burt Kreischer, who's like the king of like totally selling yourself in every single way, I felt yeah, like Mark been, changed been... and he totally got himself out there. So to me, it was like just show your everything. Like, Instagram, what are you doing today? You know, like even the boringest stuff, like people need or slash want. Yeah. It seems like. Yeah, I've noticed that like my buddy, my buddy Shane opens for Bert and um Shane Gillis? Also, no, Shane Torres. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And he's been uh he's he's also gotten way better about getting all his shit out there and people seeing his shit. I mean, he was really good about it before, and he's like, you know, he's a really good comedian too. Yeah. But it's like, it's just shit like that. I, I just feel like I've either been unlucky or people have seen what I'm bringing to the table and they just they just don't want it. So I don't think like, so. You know. I disagree. No, because they like Bert with their shirt, his shirt off. But that's what I'm talking about. That's the that's, that's, that's the, the hook? separating yourself from other people. Like what I was talking mm. about with Ian, where like Ian's stories are so good that he separates himself from other guests like me where my stories are funny, but they're yeah. not particularly interesting. You know, Bert like, whips his shirt off and he's immediately interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his stories are also insane. Oh, and he never fucking stops. He says, I'm taking a break. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. He'll show anything anytime. Yeah. Yeah. He's a crazy man. Yeah. But it's working for him, which is good because you know comedy's hard. I mean, you you listen to him; he's had he's had breaks the whole time. I like, know, yeah. He's, he's gotten breaks his whole career, and it's still been like a fucking grind. It's been a just a hard, hard like hey, trudge. Like yeah. comparing him too. to Segura, it feels like Segura had an easier road than Bert. Bert was like, I think every his road was still probably his his. They, I think it's all uh, like. Segura doesn't talk about it, maybe. Oh, yeah. He he doesn't. I mean, his road, it seemed like, was he was in Denver. Yeah. Uh, moved to L.A. and then just struggled in L.A. and yeah. just climbed the ladder, do, like touring and touring and touring and just yeah. slowly climbed the ladder in L.A. Because I know he, he's probably been doing stand-up over 20 years. Yes. And he's I feel like finally, all of them have. And he's finally just been getting stuff, I mean, in the last five. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So at 11 years, how do you feel about that? Do you have like nine more in you to like hit it? I feel like I should give myself, I was like the other day, I was like, maybe I give it till I'm 40. Yeah. And uh, see if I can whip anything up in the next six years. Oh God. Because mm -hmm. you never know what could happen. No, and, and yeah. Think, exactly. Like, Something goes I started viral. Stand up. I started stand up. I'm like, wow, man, I'm doing stand up. You know, it's really cool. I'll never... I'll never be like, I'll never be like hanging out with, you know, the big guys, but it's nice to do. And then the other, the other day I'm you at a party know. hanging out with Todd Barry. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know. I'm like, ah, like, oh, shit. Well, I guess I, uh, you know, he knows who I am now. Well, he doesn't really, but he knows my girlfriend yeah. real well. She knows everybody. 
Oh, cool. Uh, but I'm I'm just like, you know, and then we're hanging out with MSNBC's Ari Melber. He's oh my telling God. Us, he's doing he's doing Bane impressions because he's a crazy person from the Dark Knight Rises. I was like, what is that? <laughs> Jeez. that's cool i yeah that's what i always wonder is like how do you guys like push through like years of like wondering if this is gonna hit when do i hit you know what i mean well have i have to believe it's got to be a passion <clears throat> and now love the thing and- is now the thing is for me i i used to be a little bit of a hater and a big time hater mm-hmm. And like, and uh, I used to be not, and I'm, I'm like, a, I'm like a mean guy, you know, like I'm, I'm a nice sweetheart, you know, but I'll, I say mean things to my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the like, truth. Yeah. It's, yeah. Basically I'll tell them the truth. If they're doing yeah. some shit that's like, that like sucks, I'll be like, Hey, that sucks. You're, you know? And I hope yeah. they do the same thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, now I'm just like, well, you, you know, the thing that keeps you going is doing well on stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like all the time in Chicago, I was doing real well at the Laugh Factory. I would only bomb on Sundays because <laughs> the shows on Sundays were always terrible. Yeah. That, they, they, I, I hope they've gotten better, but they were always so bad on Sundays. And I would host them. I would have to host the Sunday shows. And then one day, you know, I so I started just not even trying to look nice. Like Friday and Saturday, I'd at least wear like a clean shirt and like yeah. my pants would be clean or whatever. And I'd still would dress. I like I'd dress like this, but it would everything would be clean. But yeah. then Sundays, I'm like, I'm gonna come in in my oh, dirty right. white shirt that I've been wearing all day, and I'm just gonna not look good because I'm gonna be so hungover. And then you know, I'll go, I'll bomb, and then I'll go <laughs> home and go to bed. Right. And then one Sunday it's Christina Hutchinson is there. Uh, she does the guys we fucked podcast. Oh, yes. Man. I've listened to that. So it's all guys. So it's sold out Sunday and it's all beautiful women. Oh God. And you didn't shower. I had no idea. I had <laughs> absolutely no idea. I show up. I go, what is happening? <laughs> and Brian, the manager is like, it's guys we fucked. And why didn't you, why are you dressed like this? I go, I dress like this every Sunday, Brian. I bomb every Sunday. I go, I couldn't know that the one Sunday there was going to be a bunch of hot ladies. I would have fucking put on a jacket or something. Yeah. So I went up, I went up and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't know that it was like hot chick night. I go, it's normally bad here on Sunday. <laughs> like, normally this show is incredibly bad. And yeah. then I had like a really good set. No women talked to me afterwards, of course. <laughs> And, like women never talk to me after shows. All these guys are like, man, I bang, you know, I bang some ladies after shows or whatever. Cause I was so funny. I was like, I'm funny, but I'm not in the way where women are like, I like that. I got to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, I want to go fuck the guy that lives in a blanket fort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> yeah. I had one lady after a show, she was really hot. And she was like, I'm from Orlando. I go, Oh, Orlando. Do you take a lot of pills? <laughs> <laughs> the big town for pills, and she was like, "I gotta go." I was like, "Damn, <laughs> jeez, <laughs> that was your in." <laughs> I know. I was gonna be like, I should have just been like Disney World. <laughs> yeah, but instead, I went with pills. <laughs> pills, yeah, right. <laughs> jeez. Awesome. So, well, thank you so much for being on the podcast tonight. We look forward we to seeing like you at the I- Idol Comedy Festival. Hell yeah! I'm excited to see you guys. I'm excited to go out to. Yeah. We'll be there. I'm really hoping I get uh, that all of my Sky Miles get me upgraded to first class on the way out there. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, that we haven't cool. traveled, but you have to wear the mask the whole way, right? Yeah, that's fine with me. I don't, I don't care. Where do you stop off? Minneapolis? Yeah, because, well, I would have done it in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was way, way cheaper. But my girlfriend and I were supposed to be on the flight together. Ah. But now she's flying in because she flew into L.A. last minute earlier this week. Yeah. So now she's flying in from Boise from L.A. So I'm going by myself. And it was Seattle, then a prop plane. Yeah. She don't, yeah. She don't like to fly. So she was like, I am not Fuck getting that. a fucking prop. Yeah. 
that's what she said. She's like, I want, I was like, I think that's cool. And I would like to She's do it. She's like, I need a big jet. <laughs> yeah. So we go to Minneapolis and then it's a big jet from Minneapolis. To nice. Boise. Girlfriend's happy. You're happy. Yeah. That's the, the whole point. And that's happy. And, yeah. The cat will not be happy. <laughs> She'll be very upset that everyone has left her. Yeah, dude, we're super stoked that you're coming to Idaho. Yeah, we'll see. I'm really happy. I'm really excited to come. I can't wait to see you guys. I'm gonna, really excited. Yeah, the I, lounge is awesome. I hope, that, uh, I hope this appearance pushes some tickets. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we need people to come out. It's going to be. I mean, the price is right. Three days. Yeah, the price is like, pretty cheap. For, yeah. Yeah. And the the good thing about the festival is it's all in one place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Three stages. Some of those that are all in one place are the most fun. It's going to be yeah, super fun. I and your awesome. ticket is your mask. And there's an outdoor stage. Yeah, your ticket is your face mask. Yeah. And if you bring so they, your... They give you a face mask with a ticket on it? Yes. So, yeah, you're, you get thing. a face mask. That's your ticket. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then you're, if you bring your Vax card... You get a free jello shot. Yeah, you get a free jello shot if you bring your Vax card. <laughs> what? Thank God I have all these forged Vax cards. I'm going to get exactly. Yeah, exactly. We <laughs> should start doing that. Photocopy it. We are now yeah. selling forged Vax cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we look forward to meeting you. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm excited to be there. Super I thank stoked. you for letting me do your podcast tonight, guys. It's really fun. Thanks for letting me talk for an hour and a half. I like Fuck to talk. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. It's and been awesome. Thank you. I super wanted to say this at the beginning, but the word laugh is your in your laugh na- last oh, yeah. name. Last name. So that's uh 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 when I wear my dad makes shirts with him on it. Yeah. For Christmas every year. And sometimes yeah. it'll have Tim McLaughlin on it. Yeah. And I'll wear them and I'll be like, look, he gotta be funny. His name's got laugh hey, in it. Yeah. Every, time, <laughs> every time I do that, I bomb. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it was a bomb, but I had to say yeah. <laughs> it's like, there. I don't know. I'm sure he's heard that a million times. <laughs> Listen, I've heard it a million times, but I like it. It's all part of the delusion to keep going. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I hope we meet you and good luck to you and your girlfriend. And thanks so much for coming yes, on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love to chat. This was nice. Nice. Have a great night, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that's our outro. I'm signing out. I'm signing off. I'm Chris Adams. I'm Wendy Moser. Hashtag get toasted. Stay toasted. Boom. And thank you, Tim McLaughlin. Thanks, dude. See you in Idaho. Later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>